Let's hear uh, let's hear the tail of the tape. What, what what's the stats right now, man? You still what seven foot full? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what, what's the tape right now? Uh, six eight two seventy five, man. <laughs> six eight two seventy five, bro. Two seventy five. And the other day when we were talking, you I mean one of the biggest things you said was, man, I had to get it off you, man. How what, what was the what was your heaviest when you stopped playing? My heaviest when I stopped playing was around. You know what? My first my first six years playing, I was a uh, three fifty. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Um, of course, you know how we work. You know, every Friday, you know, everybody go in that lock, go in that sauna, come in early, go in there and get that sweaty in just to make the way is man. So, correct. <laughs> when you're an overweight child in a society that demands perfection. Well, your sense of right, wrong, fair and unfair will always be tragically skewed. Did you just soil yourself? Maybe. And, that, yeah, and, that's, but, uh... and, and that's the wild thing. That's the wild thing about like the weigh-ins because that's a whole cycle in itself is that, you know, okay, you get Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, to kind of recover from Sunday. And then Thursday, Friday is the way in. So Friday, you know, you might have been starving yourself from like Wednesday, Thursday, just to make oh, sure yeah. you made that weight. Yeah, Most definitely. Then, you coming off of, of a physical game. But the, the flip side to that is after you make that weight on Friday morning, it's, it's back to feeding time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's, it's, it's all go. <laughs> it's all go. Friday, at lunch, you know, breakfast. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, lunchtime, then not even counting the meals when we, you know, get to, to wherever we going to Saturday, you know, and, oh my goodness, it just, shoot, I probably put on about five to seven, eight, five to eight pounds after that weigh in every week, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> from my eating, you know, playing catch up, you know, so. And it's wild because, I mean, you know, like you said, like we'll have the team dinner that Friday and do that. And it, so it's not crazy to be, you know, 10, 15 pounds different. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And a guy Easy. like you who were who was swinging in between playing, you know, tackle, might have to go inside and play some guard a little bit. And that was the interesting right. thing talking to guys who, especially on the offensive line side, they always made a press to be like, Man, I might have to move inside this week, so I'm eating extra. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. That's the thing. You always feel like that's gonna be the thing that saves you inside the trenches being a little bit heavier. Most definitely, especially when you're playing against the y'all, y'all defensive linemen, man, D tackles and nose guards and stuff like that. So, but you know, like my my main position was tackle, mm-hmm. but a few times I did have to swing on the inside. And you know, shoot, you got some heavy guys coming in uh, that you got to block. I'm like, shoot, I want to be heavy, heavy as they are. Correct. But mm-hmm. at tackle, I would try to be light on my feet, so I wouldn't I wouldn't try to eat too too much, but I would do it after after we had the weigh in because you know playing catch up, you know trying to like you say starve ourselves uh, Wednesday Thursday night Friday Thursday night of course you know so it was it was a, it was a yo yo effect man you um you came up you you had the benefit of coming up under like some really Hall of Fame dudes Willie of course when you went over to the Eagles because you went to the Eagles for a minute right yeah I was there for a year I was there for a year dang it almost two years and then I went out to Seattle after that. That's right. So you, you got know, to see, so. you got to see big Jason Peters. You know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah. He was a, mm-hmm. a big Austin himself. He played with your brother in Arkansas. You know, we right? Got stories all day for that. Uh, <laughs> me and Preston always tell the story of. I think this was like my fresh junior year, his sophomore year. Your your brother was playing tackle. JP was playing tight end, <laughs> and them dudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This hey, dude crazy. Was and the whole week, that's all we was talking about. That's all our coach was talking about. Because we was playing a 3-3, three, 3-3 three, three, three head up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the wild stuff. And our coach is like, you better hold position. You better. We're like, boy, get <laughs> man. Hey. That's, that's a wild thing in itself. Get right. Most definitely. Hey, them boys were mashing. Them boys were doing their thing out there, man. For sure. But but uh-huh. so the point is, you, you came up under really, I mean, Willie is a huge dude. JP is a huge dude. Um, did they, did you learn anything from being around big dudes like that on how to like to try to manage your body? Because it was that fine balance of being that dancing bear going out there protecting the edge because of the speed guy. Oh yeah. Then oh, man. Down there to try to root somebody out. It's kind of like, 
it's a wild deal. What did some of those older, bigger dudes kind of teach you about handling all this stuff? You know what, man? Wheelie was a, he was a big influence on my career, man, when I first got there. You know, because I only had five games of experience prior to making it to the NFL. You know what I'm saying? So I was like green as I don't know what out there, you know, yeah. making a lot of mistakes. Willie would, um, he would, I would, I would make, he would make sure he watched me, watch all of my snaps while we would, you know, when I would go in there practice. And especially when it came time for me to, you know, when he kind of nicked himself my first couple of years, you know what I'm saying? Before I took over at tackle position, you know what I'm saying? So he, he made sure he watched my every move, my hands, my feet and everything and, and was very influential in my career. And it's tough. Big cause, time. It's, it's tough because you're always, uh, you know, being from the South, food. Um, did you guys kind of vibe on that a little? Because, again, Willie is just – y'all boys is just going to be big regardless. You know what I'm Oh, saying? yeah, most definitely, man. He um, was like, man, make sure you take care of your body because, you know, I've seen guys that come in, don't take care of their body or the, don't have the right nutrition, and then they just fold out. You know what I'm saying? They phase out the league real quick. So, you know, I, I, I did – I tried to eat right for the most part, well, half the part, because <laughs> I remember going in, you know, during the week, I would go to, uh, I lived out in Florence, so I would I would always hit up five, not five guys, what was the name of that, uh, Famous Dave's. I would go in there and get a full, I would get a full appetizer of the, the uh, cheese fries, loaded fries now, eat the whole thing by myself. Then I would order a full rack of reels, bro. So, <laughs> but he did harp. He did harp on my on my uh, and, and and speak about how his nutrition was was key, along with you know the processes of taking care of his body with the with the massages, the uh, acupuncture, and all that. So it all balanced out, you know. For sure, and that's and and that's a wild thing when you when you say it now, like man, I apologize for thinking cheese fries and you know. Uh, Three slabs of ribs, you know. Oh my goodness! Only got only two slabs of ribs on a poke on, on a on a pig, but you get three. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about it, you're like, man, how did I consume that much? But your output was so crazy, and that's kind of the catch twenty two after you stop playing. It's like right. you still thinking you got that output going on, but you still right. you ain't putting out like that, but you inputting like as if you still playing. Has that been a big exactly. adjustment for you trying to get that diet squared away? To. Man, look here. It was hard because, you know, I was so used to still, you know, eating what I want to eat, eating how much I wanted to eat, you know. And I'm like, I went to the doctor. My they're like, your blood pressure a little high. You know, your cholesterol is getting up there. So I'm like, man, and I got to change this because my dad had passed from um, a stroke, and then my sis, my my dad's sister, she died you know, from, from symptoms with high blood pressure and cholesterol, high cholesterol. So mm. I'm like, I got to change this. You know what I'm saying? Cause I want to be here to, 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 to be able to play with my kids, to, to be able to watch them grow up, you know? So I'm like, I got, I got to change it, man. Correct. So is that the biggest thing for you right now is, is, um, uh, is like the weight goal. If you had a list of 10 things, it's like the weight, you know, down there, maybe four or five. And the biggest thing for you to be healthy is make sure your numbers are right. And, um, you, you, you got your medications in check and, and doing all those things so you can have that quality of life, like you say. Because what's the point of making all this money if you, ain't, if you can't really enjoy it, right? If you can't, they can't enjoy it. Exactly, man. And that was, one of, that was one of the bigger keys for me. So my thing is now, I, uh, I, I, when, I, when, I, when, I re, when I shut it down in 2012, after we won the Super Bowl, I'm like, I tried the Atkins diet. I tried the South Beach diet. I tried the keto diet. Although, whatever diet you name, I tried it. Yeah. Still hungry? Still hungry? Maybe you should try Jenny Craig. Yeah. Nothing worked for me. I mean, the keto diet kind of worked for a little while, but after that work, after that first couple weeks, it was like nothing at all, no results. And you know. So what 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 I found out that works for me is 
I started researching. I heard about intermittent fasting. And I'm like, man, how in the world am I going to, you know, fast for 16 hours, not eat for breakfast, go be, be able to have energy to work out, you know, to push out that, that energy effort and um, stuff in the gym when I'm working out. But the more I looked at it, man, and the more that I got into it, I have tons of energy, man. So <clears throat> my eating window is from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. No, 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 12 to 8, depending on which one I choose that day. But So I'll eat a meal at 1, eat a snack two or three hours later, and I'll eat another small meal for dinner and maybe another snack about 8 o'clock. And that's it. Drink tons of water. You know, so I wake up 6.30, 7 o'clock, take my son to practice, I mean, workouts and whatnot. And I go to work out for two, two and a half hours off of no food, no food, no food in my body. Just water, man. I'm talking about I have so much energy till it's, it's, it's crazy. And like with me, when I eat now, if I was to eat breakfast, it, it drains my energy. So intermittent fasting, that helps me help me out big time, man. For sure. And that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the gift of being an athlete. We've all had our bodies and tested out, you know, different ways. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Most so definitely. As we get out of playing football, you know, we got to take those same things and use it now. So like you said, we'll work, you know, keto might have worked for Preston, but it don't work for me. Or, you know, I got Uh, diabetes, so I can't, I can't go too heavy on this. One of our partners who we play with, he's huge, um, 6'6", you know, 300 plus, but he's got a lot of kidneys issues, so he can't upload on protein like that. Right, right. So for him, it's that fine balance. And you know, ultimately, it comes back to portion control and portion and, control, most and definitely. Trying to put a trying to put a little fence around yourself. So a lot of guys find success with intermittent fast. Go ahead, Pete. So mm-hmm. when you were saying your what do you, what do you, what do your meals look like? Because you know, again, you know, you can use your fat guy logic to be like, man, well, I can have a meal of three double cheeseburgers, no bread, because I'm still keto. But you know what I'm saying? So how does that look for you? Okay. My first meal every day is, you know, some people can't eat the same thing every day. I can, thankfully. Okay. So mm-hmm. my first meal is a nice pro- a chocolate peanut butter protein shake. I got my, my apple pie um, protein cookie, and I'll put, like, two scoops of peanut butter on it. So that's my first meal every day. You know what I'm saying? I do that. I've been doing that for two months now, you know, when, when I tried it, when I switched. So I, tw- I switched it up about two months ago. So I've been doing that every day, my first meal. You know what I'm saying? And after that, I would do, uh, for a snack, I'd do like uh, a handful of cashews, water, because that that tends to hold me over for a while. And like for dinner around six, I probably do like, um, I go to tzatziki's, I get like salmon and a, tz- and a grilled, a Greek yogurt, sal- you know, a Greek salad or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So it don't take me much to get full anymore. You know, I had to change my mindset on, a, you gotta, you, you, you don't want to, I eat to live. I don't live to eat. You enjoying your celery? Uh, you think I'm not, Gina? <laughs> Baby, let me explain something to you, all right? I don't live to eat. Mm-hmm. I eat to live. Huh? Uh, think of how powerful I just came. That's my, that was my, that's my thing now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My body feel a whole lot better. The inflammation has gone down. Of course, you know, we, have, we experienced a lot of that with football. I still have some, you know, and, and a few issues that I have with playing football, but my, my, my inflammation has gone down a lot, man. And I'm telling you, it helped me out big time. That's, um, that's probably some of the biggest things because everybody got a number, you know. Man, I want to get six pack. I want to weigh this. I you know, I ain't weigh yeah. that. But for a lot of guys, it's just feeling better. Like, you feeling know, better, I, man. Spice was saying, man, I don't got to get up. I don't got to move in sections to get up out the chair. You know, I, yeah. I move my leg first. Then I move my arm. And then, you know, now I can just get up. And yeah. especially as we get older, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't feel oh, yeah. good. 
that carry so much work on his frame. So what is the what does the output look like? So you say you work out for two hours. Is that every day? Is it like rehab? What it, what's that workout look like? No, it's um like right now I'm I do like weights for like an hour and a half. I do cardio for like forty five minutes, and then I do like some stretching and sauna after that. You okay. know what I'm saying? And run my mouth, of course, talking and laughing with people in there between in between time. But but that's my that's the way I hit it hit it now. Where you working and, out? Um, you work you working out like at a Y? You working out like a like a training facility? It's just like an old gym down here. I got like I got a couple memberships down here. Sometimes I go to LA Fitness or I go to like one of the home gyms here, um, Athletic Club that has everything that we need in there. You know what I'm saying? And another thing that I picked up, man, here as of last five that last four to four to five months is cycling, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, my wife had bought me a, she got me a road bike, one of the, one of the uh, cycling road bikes three years ago. I rode it. Uh, she got it. She got it for me. And I rode it maybe four to five times that first year. It's set up in the garage for like a year and a half. This year, I'm like, man, I got to pull this bike out. So I've, I've been riding that Joker, man. And um, my first, my the most I've ridden is 35 miles, man, and it, it, you can burn a lot of calories. You know, you're not running on that hard concrete because of my knees. I can't run on concrete. So hitting that bike, man, that burns tons of calories. I love it. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to ride in about an hour or two, man. I got to go, go get my miles in, man. So I got a question. So a lot of folks are talking about, you know, when you, know, you as an as a athlete, when you go into L.A. fitness, you see people like staring at you, looking at working out. Have you experienced that sort of deal? Or how, you know, when you go to work out and say a regular fitness club, how does that work for you? You know what, man? People, you know what? And I got, it's, it's this gym down here um, that's over there by War Memorial Football Stadium that I go to. And it's tons of people. It's a lot of people over there. Like people, kind, people gravitate to me. They see how hard I be working out in there. And they be like, man, why you work out so hard? You know, you don't, you don't have anything to prove. I say, I want to be here, you know, for the longevity. It's not about trying to pack on muscle and, and try to, you know, hit the, hit it to, to, to perform out there on the football field anymore. This is right here is for, it's, it's a lifestyle for me. You know what I'm saying? I feel good working out when the days that I don't work out like a Saturday or Sunday, which I, I take like a day or two off here and there every other week. You know what I'm saying? My body be like ah, screaming at me. So I got to get in there and do something, man. And I love it. I feel great doing it. And, um, it's just gonna be that's 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 something I'm gonna be doing for from here on out. I like it because it comes back to like you know you know what I'm saying your mindset and so it's funny because when we plan, man, this is what we always say you know on the sideline, man, I, man. When I'm done, I ain't never gonna run. I ain't never gonna all run. the time. None of this <laughs> shit. No more. But like you forget how good when you combine the movements, especially like every day. Now again, we're not talking about smashing each other, but. You know, right. walking, biking, you know, getting the, the stretch on a little bit of little bit of weights, you know what I'm saying? But it really does help you physically and mentally, the chemicals oh, just yeah, most feel definitely. better. And so um it's interesting you said biking because a lot of the guys we talked to, they started, you know, using the Peloton programs and a lot of guys right. working using technology that link up um and competing with each other, but you know, from their oh, yeah. far. And that's been the biggest thing for all of us because we've all been competitors. Is that something that kind of keeps you on track too? Because even though it's you by yourself, you're still looking around and seeing, man, what he doing? What? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, most definitely. You got to do that. <laughs> you know, it's it's built. That's that's just that's just the way we built as athletes. You know, and uh, here as of like about five months ago, I ran into this guy. He's down here. He's uh he's trying to get to become one of the uh he's what twenty four a young guy. He's um you know doing the the, the power lifting and stuff like that. So I've been working out with him and okay, like he'll. He'll hit some heavy sometimes, and then I don't know if you check my my videos out on Instagram, but you know when I did the deadlift, man, we be in there pushing each other. It's like competition. Like he's an athlete; he played football in college and stuff. So we got that mindset, man. That hey, we gonna compete. We gonna compete at all time, and that makes it fun, man. You know, challenge each other, each other. I'm not trying to lift the whole house like I you know tried back then in college and 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 whatnot, but it's just fun to compete now, you know. The other big thing I like, you know, when we asked you about working out, you was like, man, I got a couple memberships around the city, right? Oh, yeah. That's kind of the, it's kind of the same deal when you're talking about eating. Like, there's so many choices, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, if you're hungry and you let yourself get too hungry, too thirsty, 
you know, all the fast food places out there, you know, you oh, man. Go, but you took the same stance when it comes to working out. Like, you know, that's an easy excuse, man. I can't go to that gym on this side of town. You know, I don't got no membership, but you got memberships everywhere. That helps you. Ain't no excuse. It kind of takes away the excuse for you to get the work in. It does. And you know what? When the, when the quarantine hit, of course, everything shut down. Um, but I knew a guy that had a small little gym that, you know, I've been knowing him for a long time and he would let me come work out in. So, you know, I didn't, it, you know, it's not a membership gym right, right there, but like a couple months after the quarantine hit, you know, 10 Fitness opened up. Of course, you had to wear the mask in there, you know, so I was like, you know, I got to get it how I live, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like my, my other main gym wasn't open. So I went and got a membership there, you know what I'm saying, for temp- temporary um, workout access and all. So I, I got to get it in, man. You know, I got to, I can't, I can't make no excuses. You know what I'm saying? You make excuses, then you'll keep, they'll keep piling up. And then here we go. I'm, I'm back up to 300, 350 pounds. You know what I'm saying? I can't, no way I can do that. Right. Right. And that's the thing is like, that's the scary thing is we've been big our whole lives, but like right. everybody kind of has like a number in their mind. They don't want to get to because it's like swimming. Okay. You know, you get too far away from the shore, you're going to just be out there. And so, yeah, there are a certain number for you. you like, man, I can't go past 360 because, man, I, I just know it's going to be it's going to be hell for me to get back from here. You, you know, know what? Um, when I first got out, when I first shut it down in 2012, I did um, I dropped down to 275. But I would go to the gym. I wouldn't do no weights. All I would do, I would go in and hit an hour on the elliptical every day. I would do that elliptical. I would go get in that sauna for about 20, 25 minutes, hit the steam room, you know, about 10, well, as long as I could stand five minutes out of the steam room. But, you know, I would do that every single day, uh, at least six days a week. And I lost, I lost weight fast. You know what I'm saying? I tapered my eating back, tapered my, my portion size down. But I started going around family members and they're like, man, you look sick. You know, I lost all my, I lost muscle when I, when I did it that way. I didn't have no, you know, I wasn't hitting no weights. So I'm like, dang. I took a picture. I went home to my hometown. We took pictures. I looked at those pictures, man. I'm like, God, I look bad. So I put on, I went back from like 270 to, I, I popped it back up to like 300 okay. on purpose. And then I'm like, man, this time, this go around, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to still hit my hour cardio and I'm going to add weights to it. And it's been on from there. And then I finally got it back down to where I'm 275 now, which I'm going to try to maintain. I'm going I'm to I'm probably try to drop to about 255 to see how I look and feel. Mm-hmm. But if I don't, no biggie, because I feel good where I'm at now. But you know what I'm saying? So when's the last time you, Stacey Andrews, been 255? That's a good question. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> was, it, was it high school? Hey. Was it college? Nah, you was, you was old. High, it was high school, man. It was, matter of fact, I want to say maybe around my 10th grade year, man. Probably about my 10th grade year, bro. Yeah. Crazy. 10th grade, like, grade seems to be the year for everybody. Like 10th grade, when it just, it just starts going hey, up. I'm telling you, when I, you know, of course, I, I didn't play football in high school. I did basketball and track, you know what I'm saying, uh, discus throw. So, of course, I was, you know, lighter. But once I, once I hit college, bro, train the table. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't used to that. I come from a single parent home where, you know, we had to get it how we live. You know, mom did her thing to make sure we had what we need, you know, as far as, you know, things to eat. But, you know, it was hard a lot of times. So when I went to, co- when we, when I went to college, man, we, the coach said, hey, here's the training table. You can get what you want. Lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I did exactly that times two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, my weight bounced from the twos to, you know, three forty five. Man, like quick. Right. You know what I'm saying so. And you were still out there undercover track athlete at the time, right? Yeah, you was, exactly, you man. Know, so, and that's the beautiful thing I found out. You know, when you on the track team in college, like if you a thrower, you, you might run a little, little bit, but you ain't. You oh, working yeah. on throwing. You ain't. You know what I'm saying? So it's totally different from like that high school track workout where they make everybody run. Or, right, know. exactly. So it's interesting. Like you said, you, you think you're going to be out there moving more, but you're like, nah, I'm really just eating more and lifting more. Man, just like, eating more and lifting more. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And that's I mean, the, rest the only of running we up. did at track is one lap around the uh, one lap around the field, bro. The warm-up. Yeah, hey, we, the warm-up. That's it. And then they ain't really <laughs> watching. It's not like football where they like, 
You know, they watching you. Oh, yeah. And that's the beauty exactly. of it, man. That's the beauty of it. Um, right. OK, so that's that's an interesting thing. You talk about, you know, your family and because for a lot of us, sports fed us. You know what I'm saying? Like you was the man on your team. So you get player of the week or, you know, you the man in your city and you go into the McDonald's. And they going to they going to take care of it. They going to fill that bag up with burgers because you can ball or your brother could ball. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's kind of the catch 22, because like like you saying, man, like I'm. You know, we don't have much of the crib, but I'm playing to eat. But then it's just, you know, fast food, all this other stuff. So it comes back to, you know, trying to regulate yourself so you just don't go too crazy. But you're still a kid. You want to eat, though. Yeah. Man, yeah. I'm going to tell you, in our hometown, we had a, uh, we used to have, no, that was, yeah. No, that was in college. We had. And, and I, I tell people this all the time that come to me in the gym. They be like, dang, bro, you look good. You know, how did you lose it? And this and this and that. And what was your mind state at before and after? You know, my thing is, bro, I used to see those double, let me see here, at, at Wendy's, they used to have those double stacks, man. A double stack, that was a dollar piece. I went one time, got 10 of them and ate all of them at one time, bro. <laughs> I used to do crazy numbers with it, man. But again, like, I, I, love, I love to hear it because we all got a story like that. And you say that now, but it's like, I bet after you ate them 10 double stacks, was you like, just like, oh, or would you probably like, yeah, I can eat a little Before, bit later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Felt bad, man. <laughs> but I did it, man. That's the way I'm, that's, you know, shoot, I was trying to play catch up, but. So the, the biggest, so one big thing we always talk about is like the food culture shock when you come from your house or your city to going to a major university, the training mm -hmm. table, man, is just like, uh, like, it's just like, oh heaven, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, most definitely. That's, that's the beautiful thing. And I always tell folks, man, like, that's why you see guys make these jumps, already big individuals, but you giving them three, four square meals a day. Oh yeah. Quality sleep, quality sleep. Man, it's not going to be surprising this dude gained 50 pounds in a year because he's just eating right. Easy. Most definitely, man. When did you yourself man. know that you were big? Because, I mean, again, you come from a big family, big dudes, big folks. When did you know you were big? Um, I would say it hit me right around, right around the combine time. Sean as well. Okay. Same time. We went out to uh we we well we went out to Arizona to Scottsdale to work out to train out there at API. Okay. Um, I never never forget it. Percy Knox was the head guy over there, and he was like, uh, well, it was my me, Sean, my agent, our agent, and uh Percy. He was like, well, y'all get on the scale. I said, okay. I got on that jump, three sixty. I'm like, what in the world? Cause I I don't I didn't I never weighed in. You know, I never weighed in, didn't care to weigh in. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shoot, I'm, you know, doing my thing, working out, and wouldn't never thought about it. I was just, shoot, pounding it, pounding it in, and still working out. But Sean got on that joker. I don't know if he want me to tell the story, but he ain't, he won't mind. <laughs> and that John said 400, it was four, four, three or something like that, man. And and he looked around, he was like, God, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was, that was, that was when I knew you know what I'm saying? As far as the weight part, you know, that I knew I had to get it under control. That, that was a, that was a, uh, that was, that was one of the main points right, right, right there for me. Cause your brother, I mean, he's big, but he's not as tall as you. And so, you know, it's, right. packed, it's packed in more blocks of granite. So right. I mean, regardless, I mean, those numbers are big, but it's just always wild because I mean, especially growing up in a family of two bigger dudes, you know, it's always, it's one thing when it's just you by yourself, but when you got somebody else, it's like, okay. But man, the other thing is too, and people are like, man, well, how could you not weigh yourself? But like you said, man, I'm not out here tired. I'm not out here. Not at all. Not I'm, at all. I'm hooping. I'm running. You know, when I do yes, my one lap around the field, I'm, man, I could beat you if I want to. So that's right. the reason why you don't hop on a scale because you're not feeling, you're not feeling like, exactly. like a jump. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Especially in track, you know, we didn't have to weigh in. Like, I don't know how it was uh, for y'all with foot, because I didn't have much of experience with college and football. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With football in college. So I don't, I don't, did, what, did you all have to weigh in like we did in the NFL? Certain, certain, it just depends. You know, like, you know, if they wanted yeah. to go after you, they'd go after you, but it wasn't as harsh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. 
But it just, again, yeah. that, that was program to program. It just depends. Just like you know, right. Cincinnati, certain dudes was, you know, Chip them was really on it. I go to Arizona. Right. They like, man, fill your own damn way there. We not going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, really? I mean, it just depends on who you're, they were more concerned about water. You know what I'm saying? A high oh, Okay. And so they wanted to see how much, okay, if you weigh 310, that's what you want to play. You better have 10 bottles of this in your locker and we better see. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, okay. The heat, the heat will show you really quick. Um, I'm sure there's probably a, a whole bunch of, of interesting uh, stories over food in the house when you and your brother were coming up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> was there ever any fist fights or man? Oh, I thought man. I thought there was one more little Debbie in that in that box, man. Why you why you ate it? You know what I'm saying? You got any hey. stories on that? Man, you know what we talk about it all the time, and our mom sit back and, and and she'll laugh at it. But at the time, she was you know single parent and you know living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. She would go get groceries. You know, she laugh at this now, but but <laughs> she would go get groceries. Me and Sean, we hear her pulling up in the yard. We we get we stop everything we do to, to we boom run into the door. You know, about to knock each other over, trying to get out to help with the groceries. So we go out, pick the bags up, put, put them in the house. Meanwhile, we should be helping her take them out the bag and put them up. But we looking through there to see what she done got. You know what I'm saying? And um, so she, we, we love ice cream sandwiches like and, and stuff like that. So she would buy them. And, you know, uh, Sean would go, after she put up everything, she leave out the kitchen. I go in there, Sean get one. We get, you know, I get one, he get one you know, or, or, or the, the other way around. If he get two, I'm going to get two. You know, so we always challenging each other as far as who going to eat the most. Uh, knowing, not, you know, knowing that we, once it's gone, it's gone. Like, mama, mama, you know, did doing all she can. But that was the time we went in that, in that Joker, man. It was one left in there. <laughs> and Sean went in there and he, he tried. I knew what he, he was going to do. He went in there trying to get that last one out of that man. I must have come in there and joke it. And Dane that knocked him over trying to get that, trying to get that box out of his head. <laughs> As they have a way of doing, the years passed somewhat regularly. And the boys, well, they came into their own. <laughs> so we had a hey, we would go at it, man, toe to toe. For, we would, we would have, we would go at it toe to toe, man. When it come to us eating in that Joker, man, we were both greedy, you know. So that's what I'm saying, man. You don't get to be a big kid just by being like, no, I'm fine. I don't want to. Nah, yeah. Right. Like, give me that last one. Give me that last. Oh yeah. And then Got too, man. And then when there's two big uh, sharks in the house eat, man, it's you know y'all both always oh, you get that fridge God. open. You looking like, man, what he get? What he get? You know. What I'm oh saying? yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, we clocking each other, bro, <laughs> the whole time. And again, it goes back to now, you know, because old habits die hard. And, and again, it's the same thing, competition, football, sports. Competition. Track. Um, yeah. We always went above and beyond anyway. So when somebody right. says, and do 10 reps, you're going to do 12. And so oh, now, yeah. when you have the ability to buy what you want, and, you know, uh, it's interesting you said after practice, you would kind of reward yourself with the food. And that's the hard oh, yeah. part because they telling you, yeah, don't drink, don't don't do no drugs, don't stay out late, don't you know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know they ain't gonna knock you for 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 food, and that's the that's the kind of switch you got to change when you're trying to make that transition from being not as big after playing is to stop rewarding yourself with food and stop trying. That's to real. Eat your emotions. You know what I'm saying? Because right. You can trick yourself into doing that, saying, "Man, I ain't, I ain't like Johnny over there. He drinking a bottle every night. I'm just eating six ice cream sandwiches." You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. You're right about that, man. So, so, so uh, were there any times when you were getting heavier? Did were there any times when you would find yourself overeating? Were there any like triggers for you, or would it be like boredom or nighttime? What What was sort of your overeating trigger? Do you know what when? One of my, one of them was of course like he just meant, like Lang, Lang just mentioned uh you know you come and you got you got the money to go buy what you want I did that and I would eat how much and buy how much I wanted Why do we do this to ourselves Every time we get depressed we eat and eat and eat Don't you You go to the store and you buy those little candy bars in the bag and before you know it the whole bag is empty And then at the end you feel just like that bag 
Empty inside. <laughs> don't you? Don't you? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just get it all out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And another trigger when I was playing ball is, you know, if I mess up in practice that evening, I know, you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, because we don't, we didn't watch film afterward. We would watch film that next day. You know, the coaches would stay and watch film. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, we did some, we did some days, but stay and watch it. But I'm like, golly, man, I'm stressing over like this play that I done messed up in practice. So I'm like. That was one of my triggers. When I when I stressed out on that, I would go get me a, a fat burger, fries, shake, all that. You know what I'm saying? Which wasn't the right thing to do, but it comfort it 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 was a comfort for me at that time because knowing I gotta face the coaches the next morning and get cussed out in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? My early years, you know what I'm saying? That's when I was when I was learning, but that was one of my triggers, and I did that a lot, man, to be honest with you. That's wild because you think about it. Um you know, of course, you get the immediate satisfaction of like the salt, right. the sugar, the food. OK, you feel good. But on some deeper psychological level, you're probably puffing yourself up, making yourself bigger to like protect yourself from, you know, that tongue lashing that Paul going to give oh, you. Oh, yeah. Or, or whoever. And it's, and it's yeah. wild because that's another thing we always talk about was like, you know, like being big has helped you navigate life in a different way. You know, like most of the people ain't going to try you. You know, you already oh, yeah. stand out from a crowd because you big, and, but you're not a fat, sloppy, you know what I'm saying? So even still to this day, people will gravitate to you. Um, but that's also what some of the things we found out, like a lot of guys don't want to lose too much weight because they'll lose that identity of being a big man or a, a big mm -hmm. dog, you know what I'm saying? Because like, a lot of these guys we've seen get really, really skinny. Like, I saw Alan Fenneker the other day. I was like, is that him? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really? Like, you say it's that balance of, like, wanting to be healthy, but it, wanting to be skinny, but then you look kind of sick, but then, you know, right. you don't want to try it. So, it's all of these things always all mixed yeah. up into this, man, which is which makes it kind of hard to, to to do what's right and get yourself right um, at the it, end of the day. It does. It does, because, like, when I, like I say, the first time when I dropped that weight, when I figured it out and I was just doing all cardio and I was just skinny, man, had no no definition, no nothing. I'd be like, God, I look in the mirror and look back at old pictures like, man, I had traps, I had, you know, some buys, it looked, you know, tries. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm like, I lost it all. So I gotta, in my mind, I, shoot, I gotta put it back, put a little weight back on and bust it back down with the weights, you know what I'm saying? So like you say, like being, used to being a big dog or being a certain way, but, I don't know. Some guys do lose all that by doing a lot of cardio. Like, oh, what's my, uh, what's, I can't remember his name. I saw him the other day. Uh, he was, he was our center out in Seattle. I was only out there for uh, that one year. But, uh, um, but yeah, he had, what was it? Um, boy, if, if, it, if I wouldn't just say it, I'd have been on, I'd have, I'd have called his name out. Because he had went to the Saints after that. Uh, but I saw where he had lost a lot of weight and people like don't recognize him and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. he's all lean, lean, lean with no, you know, but he looked good. But I, you know, I just can't, I had to feel my, feel myself back out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For my mental, you know. Because some guys have had their wives say stuff like, all right now, shit, you know, you lost, you, I see you serious and you committed. All right, I'm glad you lost 50 pounds, but that's it. You yeah. Know? Cause I want a big dude, you know what I'm saying. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. All these that little too. excuses are right there to kind of keep you, you know, what I'm saying big, but it comes back to you figuring out, you know, what's best for you. Well, you figuring out what's exactly for you. Like, you know, you might want me to do this kick step this way, but it ain't gonna work, man. For me, I have to do it this way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I, and and that's kind of the gift and the curse of playing sports is that we know a lot of self evaluation and we watch ourselves, but. You know, a lot of times it's, you know, old habits is hard to break. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You got, you got little ones now. How many kids you got in the house with you? Uh, we have three in the house with us now. Uh, okay. my, we have a senior that just grad well, didn't graduate because of the corona mess, but. Okay. You know, so, and then my son, Stacy, he's uh, 14 and my baby girl, she's 13. So he's, he's football and my baby girl, she's basketball. 
Okay. So how does that, how is that with kids, man? Cause that's the other thing, man. A lot of, all of us got kids and we all, you know, that all our kids are going to be big genetically. And man, you know, a lot of times we marry somebody who was an athlete. So, you know, we just ain't helping the car. How do you handle all of this? Like body image and weight and all of that with your kids. Um, do you try to just be really stringent with them? Do you try to just let them be kids? How's that work in your house? You know what? I used to, you know what? I don't have that problem with my daughter. Like she's more, of a, a slim type, you know, cause she's basketball. But with my son, that's, that's the one who I, I used to let him, you know, test the waters and see what, see how far he would go with it. When he was younger, just like me, greedy. But the thing with him, he would eat until he threw up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, that's not going to get it. And now to this day, shoot, man, I have to, I have to, guard what he, you know, pretty much watch and see what he eats and stuff like that. I'm like, bro, you don't want to do that. Like, if he go in there in the morning before he have to go work out, he'll, you know, try to grab them Pop-Tarts that's got a lot of sugar in. I'm like, bro, come on, man. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that ain't gonna get it. And he's on the thicker side. He's he's probably around, he probably don't want me to say nothing about it, but he's probably around 200 pounds right now. Okay. But he's not, he's not fat with it, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But he got a little belly on him, which of course, look quarantine weight, you know, from, mm -hmm. from this past couple months, but I see how, how much he eats and I know where it's going to, I know where it would take him if he continued to do it. And I said, bro, think about this. You eat, if, if we were to let you eat what you want, you would be 250 pounds right now. So me and my wife, we have to, you know, watch, you know, tell him, you know, tell, try to guide him the right way. Yeah. And we say, bro, when you get grown and, and get out of this house, you're going to have to watch what you eat. Because I know once he's turned to lose like me, when I went to college, he's going to eat what he want, and the weight is going to shoot up. So I'm trying to install in him what, what you know, me and, me and Sean went through. You know what I'm saying? As sure. far as our weight. Because also, too, you got family history, you said, too, man. So Yeah, exactly. Um, it was interesting when we talked to, you know, some of these other guys, um, especially in the South, like, you know, a lot of times we don't make the connection that, you know, Great grandmama had high blood pressure, but we never really right. talked about it. Or, you know, mm -hmm. so and so always had issues with gout, but we ain't never talked about it. And so that's right. the other thing that, I mean, because we'll talk about our football careers and we'll talk about whatever, mm -hmm. but we won't talk about that side. And that's been, that's something interesting we found with a lot of guys. Is that something you plan on sharing with your kids or you do share with your kids? Like, you know, oh, yeah. Great granddaddy had this, man. Or, you got to be careful. And, you know, because again, this this is in your this is in your bloodstream. This is in your bloodline. So this is this is long. Just just like you gonna get the benefit of being six, whatever. You also gotta understand you might be prone to have the high blood pressure. You gotta you gotta figure that out now sooner than later. Most definitely, man. I have to tell him all the time. You know, I've talked to him about it plenty of times of how you know my dad passed of it, and my aunt passed from it. You know, his sister dealing with her blood pressure. So and me coming up, I've known I had high blood pressure since we were getting physicals in junior high. Yeah. And of course, you know, getting the physicals over there with the schools, they don't really push, okay, you need to go get the blood pressure medicine, make sure you get under control. You know, they might be they maybe said when at that time, but after that, it was going out of my mind. I'm back to eating what I want to eat. Correct. So I try to tell him, bro, you got the same bloodline, you know, uh Blood, how blood pressure run, and and both of my both of my parents, you know, my mom, you know, of course, hers is under control now, but she had she dealt with it. So you gotta, I tell him, you gotta make smart decisions on what you choose to eat. Choose to eat, man. Got to one thing. Um, one thing that we kind of get introduced to as athletes is that we get a lot of great health care. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, oh we, yeah, most definitely. We gonna get them physicals every year, multiple times a year, and if something's wrong with you or they need to fix some. They gonna they gonna take you to the dude right away. You ain't gotta worry about right. the appointment. You gonna go through that back door, back door. Back yeah, door. you might even meet the doctor at six in the morning. Or you know what I'm saying. But now that you're not playing, do you still try to figure out ways to to keep on par with getting your doctor's visits and all that stuff? Because you know that's the other thing too. A lot of us don't want to look and see those numbers, but we have right. been introduced to that lifestyle of of checking on those things all the time. Right. You know what? When I first uh, when I first got out, I didn't keep up with it. But I also had I had a um, a little blood pressure monitor that I kept in the, under the drawer. And I was like, man, 
you know, sometimes I would be outside cutting my grass and I already know I had had high blood pressure and eating what I want to eat. I'm like, I'm feeling weird. My, uh, my I'm busy getting blurry and stuff like that, man. And I'm like, yo, I need to get this in check. So I did find a doctor here that I talked to one of my buddies and I got on the regular with him. So, you know, I, w- I went in, got, got on my blood pressure medicine and started taking it on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then after that, boom, six, every six months we go do a, um, we do a, uh, what is that called? We have a, we have somewhat of a physical every year. I mean, see every six months do blood work to make sure everything's going like it's supposed to. So yeah, I'm on a regular with that. That's beautiful. Now the dude who kind of helped you with the doctor, was he a, 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 another football guy? No, he wasn't. No, okay. he wasn't. Cause that's another thing for a lot of us is like, you know, when I went, I, not like last year, I went and got a, a doctor's checkup and it was wild. Like the doctor, you know, when he came in the room, he's like, you know, did the double take like, oh, damn, like, I got a big dude in here, like, you know, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm a break or something, you know, so it's wild, too, when, you know, these folks, these doctors, and they see regular folks all the time, but then you sitting up on there on the table all big, and they coming in, they're like, oh, man, all right, big dude, right. you know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's just <laughs> interesting, and, that, and that's another thing that does keep a lot of us away, because, man, I got to go through the scheduling, I got to go, what is a code? Oh, thing? yeah, man. I- oh, man. But again, those excuses will pile up, and next thing you know, you ain't had no physical since you played 12 years ago. You know what I'm saying? You're right about that. You show sure right about that. And I hated every minute of it. You know what I'm saying? So like you spoke, spoke on about how, you know, we get to go through the back door, or they come to us. You know what I'm saying? When I first got out, I'm like, I'm back out here, you know, uh, not no front door service. So now I got to go check in. I got to go sit down. 20 minutes or so to wait till the doctor till they call me back there. Then I have to sit after the the uh the nurse check my blood pressure and, and, and my heart and stuff like that. We gotta wait another 20 minutes to the doctor come in the room. I'm like, golly, man. <laughs> I hated it at first, man. To tell you what, that kind of pushed me back to like, shit, man, I, I I don't I don't need it. I just watch what I eat. In my mind, I'm like, I just watch what I eat just to, you know, to 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 avoid having to go through all that, you know, because I was used to you know, she was walking up through the back door. Boom, we right in there to see the doctor. VIP you know, everything. So it was a big change. Yeah, VIP, VIP everything. Restaurant, VIP change. doctor's office, VIP the club, VIP the shoe store. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But that's tough, though, because like you said, a lot of guys would just be like, man, bump it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's the worst thing you could do, especially as we get further and further away, because like I said, man, it's been a long time since you've you know, you've been carrying this weight a long time, but you haven't been working and doing the things you need to, and it's it becomes that silent killer, man. Um, That's most definitely. Uh, shoot, this is great, man. So uh, getting to kind of like the lightning round stuff, um, you live in Arkansas. What's a, what's, what's a daily battle or what's a, ba- a weekly battle for a place there in Arkansas that you can't go by and eat? Like, you like, man, I know I can't go down that street because... You know, they got the barbecue on Thursdays, man. I got to, is there some places in your hometown? Because that's another thing we say, living in a place where you grew up, you know where all the eat spots at. You know what I'm saying? I love so, it. Most it, definitely. It's tough. Is, is, that a, is there some spots out there you got to avoid on the, on the weekly, on the regular? You know what, man? Uh, it's this place here called Shakey's. They, it's, a, it's a custard spot, right? So I went... When I found about when I found about this spot some years ago, man, I would go buy that Joker every day and okay. give me one of those custards. And I went so much till they 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 you know they already kind of knew who I, they knew who I was, but they uh had a, a a session with all the workers in there. They put one you know on on both on, on the cashiers in there. They had they had my own deal in there. It's a button that all the cashiers knew to push when I came up. It's called the Stacy Special. And anybody can go by there right now and get it. Like, uh, let me get the Stacy special. I would get caramel pecans, uh, cake batter in that in the custard, a big a big large custard. So I would get it every day, bro. So I gotta, I gotta, I can't go down that road no more, man. I hadn't had it in about about six months. And everybody that's in my family know how much I loved it. They would give me for my birthday, give me gift cards. Uh, my mom would give me gift cards. My wife, my my cousin, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know how much I love that place, but I can't have it no more, man. <laughs> and I got to avoid it. That's the bad part, man. That's the that's the bad part. So is it safe to say you a, you a sweets guy? Or are you like a salty oh, yeah. fried food? I love man. sweets. I, I love sweets. And I used to love fried foods 
until, you know, I had issues with my cholesterol being high and I, and that's, that kind of scared me. So I'm like, yeah, I don't even, I don't care to eat fried foods no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So a lot of us can wean ourselves off that fried food, like, you know, grill it or, you know what I'm saying? Or you avoid the fries, mm-hmm. that's nothing, but that's sweet, boy. That, that, that's Oh sugar. my goodness. Hey, I love it, man. And my wife just made a, she made a, a German chocolate cake. So you got, she, made it, she, she, you got a bro. baker in the house too? I, hey, I didn't know she had in them with the German chocolate cake. Now it tastes better than my grandma cake. My grandma. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. talking about she 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 made one about she made her first one about two months ago. I smashed dang near that whole cake, bro. I mean, I no over half of that cake. I ate the whole. I ate half over half of the cake. So I had to punish myself in the gym, and I was like, I'd never do that again. She made one two weeks later. <laughs> I made I ate a little under half. She made one last week for my mom. Okay. Well, she, my mom had been wanting, my mom loves sweets too. So she cut my mom some big pieces and took it over. I took it over there to mom. So thankfully we had um, my daughter, my, um, a graduation uh, get together here at the house. So a lot of people got some. So I only got two pieces of it this time, man. <laughs> you go save your for you got to give it away and save yourself a little bit. Hey, I had to, man. I had to. I like it. I like it. So, um, all right. So, uh, when when you were full on in eat mode, were you uh, just an all day, just kind of grazer eater? Were you like a closet eater? You wait till everybody go to sleep? Was it after a certain time at night? You was like, oh man, it's nine o'clock. It's it's time to bust out the chips and all the good stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> how would you describe yourself? Man, I would, let's see here. After I worked out, I'm ready to eat. I'm like, yeah. As soon as I hit the door from the gym, I'm hitting up the wife. Hey, what we finna eat? Uh, shoot, burgers. You want this? You want? You know what I'm saying? So I would just every every uh before I start getting it in in control, I would eat what I want to eat for lunch. I would eat what I want to eat for a so called snack two or three hours later. I would eat what I want for dinner. You know what I'm saying? That's how I played it. And uh, at nighttime, I would go in there because we got a pantry full of stuff, man. We would, I would go in there and get Doritos. I love some Doritos, Cheetos, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> nacho cheese but, Doritos, I'm assuming, man, not the cool. Oh, ones. yeah, most definitely. Most definitely the nacho cheese. <laughs> okay, okay. But that's that's also the, the, the wild thing. You talk about, like, football training because, like, after you worked hard, you always going to be rewarded with a shake. Rewarded, yeah, uh, exactly. A Gatorade. Or even if you play the game, no matter how shitty you play, they still gonna give you your own box of pizza or your own bag yeah. of Chick-fil-A, right? And you could have had the worst right. game in the world, but you still gonna get that. And that's still, still gonna get it. And that's still kind of, I know for me, that's the thing. Cause like you said, man, I just walked 15,000 steps and did, you know, a kettlebell workout. Man, what's what's up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the tough part. It's just like, you know, making money, man. You spend a million a day and you make a million, you just zero on out. So you right, 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 exactly. Know. Exactly, man. And that's what that's what helped that's what made me change my mind like on my eating because I'm like, I'm in here killing the gym, bro. An hour, 15, hour 30 on weights, cardio 45 minutes. You know what I'm saying? That was after I started, after I did the intimate fat. That was recent, like a year or two. You know what I'm saying? So um it's like I go in there and kill the gym two, three hours, you know. I go out here and eat what I want to eat. That is like, it, it don't work like that. You can't, you can't out train a bad diet. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's what I tried to do. And it don't work like that, bro. Yeah. yeah. And again, we, we, we fool ourselves into thinking because you forget how much output, you know what I'm saying? Like you move, right. 50, you move 20,000 steps at a practice and then, but you work out afterwards. And then if you a real dog, you got your individualized workout. And, and so yeah. your output is crazy dumb, but, you, oh yeah, yeah. You ain't doing a tenth of that now at thirty three years old. Not at all. What you got, no, Pete? Not at all. And also for for us, for athletes, the workout is the easy part. That's the fun part. That it, it's not you know it's not torture like it is for everybody else. Working out is, is you enjoy it. So yeah. You know, so the, the hard part is actually the diet because that's when that's when the real work starts. Oh yeah, that's it. You show sure right about that. And you know what? Thinking about my career, uh. I was I was very fortunate enough to play eight years, especially from playing only five games, you know, prior in my life, period. You know, I wished I'd uh, um, pay more attention to my diet and not eat no full plate of cheese fries and then a whole rack of ribs with sides after that. You know what I'm saying? I wished I'd, uh, you know, 
had a better diet, man. Who knows? Yeah. I would have felt a lot better. The inflammation wouldn't have been as bad, man. I, I you know, been like a well oiled machine up in that joker, man. Right, right. Well, I think, man, for you, you got the, I mean, I know you, we always want to change stuff, hindsight 2020, but man, you got the perfect encapsulation. You didn't have to kill yourself too much in SEC football, but you got enough. Right. To get yeah, in. most definitely. And then you played in at the high level. And again, it's always funny because a lot of times when you think about like track athletes and different stuff, but like, but you benefit of not having those miles on you. And then, oh, yeah, big time. The, the trend, but you still are affected by all the stuff that's being around alignment as if you've been been a lineman and playing football since you was in Pee Wee, man. It's it's always oh yeah, most definitely. It's tough. All yeah. right, so so you already said the German chocolate cake, but is that your favorite cake? So if you had to have a favorite cake, what's your favorite one? That's about my favorite, but I'm gonna tell you, if somebody sit a pecan pie in my face, <laughs> oh, that's that's top of them all, man. I love pecan pie. And pecan so I, pie, however you want to say it. I'm about to say, so is it just straight pecan or you got to have that, that ice cream on that boy? I got to have the ice cream, bro. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, the key to it is, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm going back into my fat, my fat Stacy. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I will warm that joke up for 10 seconds in the microwave, the pecan pie. And I throw a piece, throw some ice cream on that joker, man. <laughs> it's all the, it's all the nuance, man. You let it melt just a little bit, you know, just oh, the yeah. right, just the right mixture, man. <laughs> okay, all right, I love it, I love it. Um, so if I'm coming to Ole Miss for a football game or just a game, where I gotta go eat at? What's the spot Langston gotta go eat, man? Like, what's that chicken spot there? Oh, uh, oh my goodness, it. It's this one chicken spot we got there, man. It's called Abner's Chicken. So okay. good, man. I'm talking about fried chicken tenders. They got they got their special sauce, man. Uh -huh. I'm talking about you got to go hit Abner's if you go to Ole Miss. Okay. Abner's. Most All right. Um, yeah. I, I could probably figure out where your spot was to eat in Ohio, but when you played in uh, Seattle, where was the go-to spot to go eat out there? Um, My go-to spot in Seattle was... Red Robin, some burgers, man. <laughs> burgers in the endless some fries, burgers. huh? Yes, sir. The endless fries, man. That's the first spot. Uh, oh no, 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 no! I take that back, bro. I take that back. It's Fat Burger, bro. <laughs> okay. West Coast Fat, fat Burger. Burger. Yes, okay. sir. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how we all got set up one year. I think. I think you might have been there then. That boy Willie had a fat burger franchise, Pete. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So yes, sir. This boy messed around and put us all in the okie doke. Had them come <laughs> to Covington, Kentucky. And I remember that. Set it out for the whole snack. I'm talking. Oh, did. I'm talking. I'm, I'm not talking no box up. You know, we got no. Them boys, what y'all want? Fries hot coming. Burgers to right. get. Babe, I'm, and you like. What? Can't forget the egg. Got the egg. egg on that too, man. <laughs> Willie did that, and, and here's the hottest shit. Just like a true fat dude, man. All big dudes, you know, when you put other big dudes on, Willie was in the crowd. Right. Just like... Oh, yeah. Hey, I seen him doing that. He was, wasn't he? <laughs> Y'all boy. Now, again, I'm not saying he didn't go eat, but I'm sure he waited till afterwards. But, man, that was also always the G move, man. Like, because there was no right. fat burger this side of the, the Mississippi, man. It was just like... Yo. Exactly. <laughs> that shit was great. Right on. All right. So who got the best uh, fast fry, fast food fries? Is it is it like, you know, Chick-fil-A, Arby's? Is it the fat food no, no, no. fries? Who got it? Hey, we got this spot here. Uh, it's about 25 miles from here in Conway, Arkansas. It's this spot called Burgers and Fried Pies. The best fries I've ever had in my life. It's like their seasoning that they put on it is like a sweet, salty seasoning, bro. It's so it's a special joint. Okay. The best fries I've ever had in my life. So it's like a little seasoning salt, but it got a little smoke to it, got a little sweet to it, little. Oh, uh, yes. So I good, like man. Bojack a little bit. Just a little bit, right? <laughs> and that's how you know big dudes is talking. You start putting it together, man. Your little, oh, yeah, you got to. <laughs> your big equation. All right. Um, if there was no repercussions, no calories, no blood pressure, no nothing, and you could eat whatever it is, what's the one thing you would eat if there was no repercussion? No fat, no nothing. The one thing that I would eat, it's gonna be a large pizza, or it's gonna be um, a burger with 
Four patties on it. Four patties. Why four patties? Four patties. Bro, look here. Uh, every once in a while, which I hadn't done in a while, uh, we got a five guys about three miles from my house. And I love their burgers too, man. They like old fashioned. So I would go in and um, I would get three patties on there. One time I got four, but <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it again. But if that was if that was something I could eat without worrying about calories, no high cholesterol or blood pressure, got to get that burger with four patties on it, man. With okay. a lot of cheese, extra cheese. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. You um you have a cheat day or is it a cheat meal? I have a cheat day. Okay. But I try not to go overboard with it, and that's every Saturday. Okay. Do you, you still know, fast on, do. on on your cheat day? Do you still be intermittent fasting on your cheat day, or how do you work that? It all depends. Like, if my wife, she know I don't, she know I don't too much mess with breakfast. But some mornings, you know, the kids will want pancakes, and then, you know, I'll go in there and mess my little intermittent fast up and get three big old fat pancakes, man. <laughs> that would be the start of it. You know, it's hard uh, when they hot. It's hard when they hot. It's hard, bro. I'm talking about fresh out the pan, butter just melting on it, sliding down. <laughs> That's the, that's the fat Stacy coming out talking again. Turn, turn to the porn hub, man. You see the way it's dripping. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. Hey. Yes, sir. <laughs> but that's how I get you, man, because, I mean, I, I mean, it, it, we always talk about how strong nostalgia is. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you were talking earlier about the Wendy's burgers. And you know, it, it makes sense that you still, to this day, with whatever it is you can get in this world, you like, man, I, I want four patties, just like, like I did back man. in the day. And nostalgia plays yes, such a big part for us, man. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think it's I think it's really interesting that you like you keep saying, man. That's the fat Stacy because we all got that hey, that's me. kind of person, that character, like man. But it's cool that you can figure out who that person is, put them to the side. Oh, yeah, I can't. Yeah, most definitely. And I think that's really similar I, to probably, probably how it was when you played ball. Like, you know, this is this is who I am when I play ball. You know, what I'm saying obviously I'm not the same person when I'm off the field, but on the field, this is who I am. It's like you say that, you know, it can easily turn into fat Stacy for... Easy. Most definitely, man. So right now I try to... I, I Like Monday through Friday, I'm eating clean. You know, for the most part. Majority of it, I'm eating clean. Uh, Saturday, I do my cheat day. You know, about two, three months ago, Saturday and Sunday used to be my cheat day. But, you know, I started staying around... Two, I, would, I would jump up two... Seven, eight. I'm like, nah, man, I got to cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Because I got these numbers in my head that I want to see myself at. So I like, I'm going to just do one cheat day. And eventually I might just, well, I ain't no might to it. I'm going to eventually just start doing one cheat meal every week, you know? And cut that whole, cut that day out. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's wild because it's a slow creep, man. It's a Oh yeah, most definitely. Creep. And that's the thing. You don't even got to be like wild and wild and like, Man, I ate 100 wings on Saturday, and on Sunday I ate two large pizzas. It could just be, you know, I had fries, and, like, it just creeps up on you, man. And that's that's probably the scariest thing, I think, man, when we talk to a lot yeah, of Yeah, most definitely. Man, I ain't even really wilding, and it, it can it can creep up on me like this, man. Um, yeah. Do you find that having another big individual in your family that's close in age, like your brother, do you find, like, do you keep each other kind of accountable? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, like, where you at right now? You weighing yourself? You good? You worked out? Or do you not, y'all not even really go there with it? Uh, how's that work? Oh, yeah. We do, man. And uh, I know he, you know, he, let me see, about eight years ago before he retweaked his back, we would work out together. And, uh, you know, he had, he, had, he, had lost, he had lost a lot. And he was like, man, I feel like I'm getting too small. I said, no, nah, man, you're looking good. But after he tweaked his back and we stopped working out, like when we meet up over to mom's house, you know, I'd be like, dang, bro, you're looking good, you know, because he had kind of went back up in weight a little bit. But he started doing his, his thing at home with the bands and um, his walking and stuff like that, you know. So you can see, I can see him starting to trim back down. I'm like, bro, you're looking good, man. And he like, man, you you over there looking like C.T. Fletcher, Stacy, man. Because <laughs> I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Looking like C.T. just yet. But <laughs> but yeah, we we stay uh, keeping tabs on each other, man. But not not as far as what you weigh, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're not, we're not doing it like that. We just, you know, going by looks, you know what I'm saying? So I can tell when he's cutting down. He's looking good now, though. And it's wild because, like, go ahead. That's interesting you oh, can oh. you can, Because you can tell, but probably the average civilian can't tell, right? So 
nobody would know if you're 275 or 300. Everybody, you just, man, you just look the same, you know? And so yeah. it's interesting. Y'all can kind of tell that, but the average person probably couldn't see that. Right. Yeah, man. And that's why it's always good to have guys who are, like I always hate to use, I mean, fishermen, other fishermen recognize other fishermen. So it's good to have another lineman or somebody be like, I mean, okay, I see you getting toned up here, but you still got the Dunlap. What's going on? Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking. Most definitely. Yeah, and, and that's the accountability that we all used to as high achievers, high. I mean, when you played in the league, I mean, everybody going to call you out on your good and they going to call you out on your bad. Oh, so yeah. But not definitely. everybody is built to handle that. And that's where I think you're right. Of us can, can sneak by because ain't nobody going to walk up to Stacy in the street and be like, damn, boy, you look like you're getting big. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to try you like that. They wouldn't dare do that. But right. homeboy would or somebody, somebody see an Instagram post, Sean might see you be like, boy, you getting fat, boy. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what, that's kind of like, you know, again, understanding yourself, understanding what you need. Um, and that's a, always a big thing, man. Always a big thing. Uh, one more question. If um, what's something that Stacy and uh, Stacy Andrews is eating in his adult retired age? that he never thought he'd grow up to, to love and enjoy? Uh, let's see here. Uh, sushi. Okay. Never thought, you know what I'm saying? I, I used to hit, people say, man, we going to the sushi bar, man. You want to, back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to eat no, I don't want to eat no raw, yeah. no raw food, man. In my mind, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I love it now, man. I love me some good old sushi now. So what is it about the sushi? Do you like it just because it's like simple, fresh, a little bit of rice, a little bit of meat, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just the perfect. Is that what it, what does it for Right. You? It's, it's, yeah. And I don't have to eat too much to get, you know, get satisfied off of it. Like, like I don't, now I, I try not to eat to get full. I don't eat to get full no more. I eat to get satisfied, you know, because I eat to get full. Who knows? Yeah. You know, so <laughs> that, that satisfied me is something quick. You know, I can go, go to a sushi bar. Boom, 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 order up, and that's it. You know, and I might get the smoked salmon on there and um stuff like that. Something that I'm in my mind back then, I'm like, I ain't no damn raw fish hell. <laughs> like, you know, but <laughs> so you were not you weren't on the sushi heavy when you was in Seattle. Hell no. <laughs> which is man, which is wild, I man. I you, was in, you was in the sushi capital of the world, right? I know I it, man. It's wild. I right? know it. I know it. Yeah. Never missed till you to till you grew up a little bit, man. But um now, this was great. Right. You got any other questions, man? This was awesome.